Hey everyone, it's your dynamic duo, Marcus and Carmia Wells. And we are here. We have this powerhouse speaker. You're going to cry. You're going to feel the feels, the tingles. She's talking about something that really is perfect timing. We're living in a mental health crisis. We're living in a time where people are not doing well. And one of the big things we're lacking in as we live in this cancel culture is we're suffering and making a mistake of estrangement. And we are straight, straight having the deepest, darkest parts of ourselves tucked away from our family and friends who love us the most. And this lady here is here on the Gentleman Style Journey to share her story and help us get to a better place and talk about estrangement between mothers and daughters. You won't want to miss one second of what this lady has to put down. Stay tuned. Stay with us. Here we go. Hey, family. It's your favorite dynamic duo, Marcus and... Armia Wells and Orthodox Southern Bell. And today we have come into the stage Miss Jody Cunningham. She's an author and expert on the topic of estrangement, particularly between mothers and daughters. With 33 years of experience as a housewife and homeschooling mom, Miss Jody has a unique perspective to help families do better. And she's going to share some of her backstory and how she came up and discovered what we all have been suffering from and what we all need to do better. And, and, and she actually wrote the book to help people do better with mothers and daughters. So without further ado, help me welcome to the stage, the incredible, the amazing Miss Jody Cunningham. Thank you, Marcus. Carmia, what a great opening. I feel like well, the red carpet. This is the red carpet. That 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 works. This is a red carpet because you are necessary. And Carmia and I specialize in bringing the highlight and finding the unique guests, the hidden gems, right? The diamond in the rough, like yourself, to the stage because we need to talk about this. We are not doing well. Um, we are not doing well in this area in an age of cancel culture. Getting rid of of connections, those deep connections, those family connections are actually more important now than ever. And you wrote the book on this. But first, I want to ask you, how did you come up with the title um, of the book, Estrangement, Healing for Mothers and Daughters, Kindle Edition? Can you mm -hmm. speak on that? Well, it's mainly personal. So I am a mom. I was a wife. I'm a sister. Um, I'm a daughter, just like all of you guys out there. And you know, I did not go to get a, I didn't go to a school to get, you know, a sociology degree or a psychology degree, but I've lived through estrangement and I'm actually like four to five generations of women that have been estranged. And so I needed to figure it out because as God basically knew my heart and he took me out of situations where I was messing them up or others were messing them up. You know, when God pulls you out of a um, burning building, you know, you've got to kind of restart. And basically, I was on the ground of, uh, you know, figuratively, sometimes literally, of just like, what did I do wrong? How do I fix these things? And, you know, the really great, um, you know, like, just like, let go, you know, let go and let God. And as God started showing me my own personal things that he wanted to, to um, heal inside of me. So a lot of times we'll say, hey, we want to fix something. But really, God's like, I've already got it taken care of, baby girl. Let's go deeper and give it to me. And as you see where God was, you start to kind of heal. And then you realize, you know, I love second um, the second chapter of Genesis in the Bible where uh, humankind was mastering the lake, the oceans, the land, the birds. I mean, how great must it been? Uh, must it, it must it have been? And so, I needed to learn how to um, master my own emotions, be at peace with all people, even if sin is crouching at the door. Like with Cain, you know, Cain killed his brother. Sin was crouching at the door. And I think the more uh, council culture we have going on, we have something that's tempting us to do something. So to look inside. And so 
the book I wrote actually has eight chapters. And um, well, it has more than that, but eight chapters are like things that you can do, like setting good, healthy, known expectations, keeping things in their rightful pay place, not elevated. So I can go on and on, Marcus, but what do you want me to say? <laughs> yes. No, this is good. This is perfect. I want to stay right here. In mm -hmm. 2019, you suffered, you experienced, not suffered, um, you experienced family estrangement yourself. 33 years, married, mom. Um, stay-at-home mom, correct? You were a stay-at-home mom. Well, I, I was a stay-at-home wife. My kids, uh, I actually homeschooled my kids until they were in the seventh and eighth grade. And then we moved around. My ex-husband was in the Navy and then also he kept job jumping. So I actually have 33 addresses in 33 years of marriage as an adult woman. And now I live, sing I say sig I'm a, a significant single woman right now, even without a husband having a head. Believe it or not, <laughs> so if you know, know what that means. But anyway, so I did do a lot with my children and I needed to let them find their journey because everything I set up for them was really my success or my failure. That's a hard pill to swallow when you're a mama because you want to set everything right for your kids. But they had a journey. I had a journey. And I can tell you, I'm not sure what they're doing because they haven't spoken to me since January of 2018, but I can tell you I'm living my journey and I've got great joy. I miss my children. I reset all the time um, and reset. What I mean is like you have a weak, sorrowful pain, but I pray I do the disciplines. I just, you know, hope the best for my kids and I do the best with with, with my life. Like I cultivate my own creativity. If you're not cultivating your own creativity, get out of your head. You were designed here to do something good and start working on it. That's Sorry, huge. that was boss. That was bossy. Sorry, no. great listeners. <laughs> nope. Do it. Do it. This we got bosses on this show. Carmia's a boss. Miss Jody's a boss. I'm just here. But I want to stick. When did it happen? At what ages were you like? The super involved mom, right? Because I, I already feel that about you. You were the super loving, super involved mom. That's I think that's a lot of women's desire is I want to focus on my kids. I think it's very hard for our women to be in a job force, um, raise kids, um, mm -hmm. be the stick and and cook dinner and clean the house and do the laundry and clean the dishes and 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 so on and so on and so on. That's a lot to bear. And so mm -hmm. at what age were your kids when you realized that you need to separate the two? And and it sounds like almost like you're living vicariously through them. And you said, mm -hmm. my kids need to be themselves. I can't. When did that happen for you? Well, I had to go through estrangement. And so when I finally got totally out of their way, because, um, you know, I was like, trying to think about that. It's kind of like a blur. But to tell you the truth, Marcus, I was having dreams of passing out. That's how involved I was. But I was also very involved in my husband's world. And I put all of my, like my, since I've been divorced, I'm doing so many things that I always had in my heart that I never did. I'm doing them now. And, but all those were put on the side. And as I kept doing things for other people and when things, you know, they were disappointed or whatever, I try to fix things, which is, it's just a nightmare uh, trying to, you know, when the, you know, when you're trying and when, when think about when there's an earthquake, you're trying to put everything together and, you know, it just keeps falling. So when I got estranged, I knew something was wrong. And God told me because he had me passing out. And when my children did decide that they weren't going to be no longer speaking with me, I did pass out. And I went to the doctor, uh, the hospital three times, and they said I had broken heart syndrome. And so as I went through counseling uh, with uh, Bob, uh, Bob and Audrey Meisner, they both have doctorates. They are Christians. They've helped a lot of people, including me. Um, and then I also got a master's in theology. Those three, four years of like really literally crawling out of, you know, the pit, like Joseph was thrown in the pit by his brothers. He had to crawl out of it. And God crawled me, helped me crawl out of it and realized, you know, I kind of needed to estrange from that Jody wife. I needed to get away from her um, myself. And I, today I'm, I'm so thankful because I really like, I've loved Christ since I was five years old. 
And I have to tell you that sometimes there was so much mix of religion and things to do to look good that if I would have died when I was married and in that situation, I don't, I think God and I would have had a big conversation before he let me into heaven. I mean, that could be whatever you want, but I think I love God now for God alone. I don't love him. I love him his attributes, obviously, but before I loved his attributes, I loved what he gave us. And now I'm like, God, whatever you want to do, you know, I'm yours. You are ultimate. My marriage is an ultimate. I'm not ultimate. My money's not ultimate. And I need to learn how to master all those things and live at peace with people. That's not huge. easy, not easy, but I'm on the journey. Never. Did you, did you ever, Carmia, I've experienced estrangement. Have you ever experienced estrangement, Carmia? Um, yes. Between myself and my, my current living parent is something that, well, I could say it, it comes from some of it can start, like, say, for example, if you don't have, I feel, but of course I can't, I can't say what he has discussed in his counseling sessions or what he's going through, but I feel it comes from, a, you know, the foundation possibly from the past before, you, before I was even here. Of with my well, before I was even created by my parents, it can come from that foundation of them and whatever they had going on with their own parents, with with their own childhood, with their family dynamic. And um, honestly, that's why I, me myself, I'm not. I don't have any. I don't have any children. I don't have any natural children. But I do believe on working on yourself first, so you can have a strong foundation of knowing who you are your problems and issues that you have things of course you don't know what things may come along but just working on yourself before you add another person so when that other person come along he has he or she has their stuff and you have your stuff we can figure out how are we going to handle each other's stuff because that's what it's going to come to anyway mm. that's real miss jody do do are there any telltale signs that we should be on the lookout for that signify hey pay attention here look out for this what are some of the signs that estrangement is happening um that people should need to know about i love that you asked that question because you know you really don't know what the other person's doing you don't really know what they're what you know you know what they tell you but you don't know their heart only god knows your heart their heart but you can know your own heart and so I actually look for signs in myself. I call it when I act like low form. So when something's mastering me, for example, let's talk about the way money masters people. So just because you have money or you don't have money doesn't mean you've mastered it. And we're called to master it because the love of money is the root of all evil. And so like there'll be signs that we have like, I'm like, How, what does that mean? I have no idea. So as I ask God for wisdom, I realize when I make choices about maybe what I buy or I don't buy, I can feel my heart racing. I'm like, wait a minute, am I being mastered by this? Am I putting this purchase above God? Or am I putting my child going to a certain college above God's ult ultimate plan? So you get these feelings or, you know, you get this tension. You know, I've noticed with me, so I've been on earth for five decades. So I noticed that between four o'clock and seven o'clock in the evening are my low times. Like I need to do self-care. I need to be quiet. I need to maybe take a bath. I need to just keep it calm, be around people that are easygoing. And like the more challenging people that are really living in that fix it kind of toxic mean way, Dealing with them early in the morning when I have a lot of um, energy, totally like in night and day. So I know there are certain things that I'll do that I would want to estrange from myself. So being aware, like, why am I doing that? Lord, show me what I'm doing. You want to heal me. This is a point I got to look at because nobody's perfect. And only Jesus was perfect. And if you think about it, our really, really good can be really, really bad. And by being made new through Jesus, we can look at those parts of us and say, you know what, I'm going to give, give this part up. I'm going to let go. I'm going to take responsibility, how I made somebody feel. That's a big deal. How do you make somebody feel? Um, also, you don't like moms don't know what their moms are going through. Like for me, like the things that happen, you know, in that made me estranged with, from my own mother for a while, what she had going on was her stuff to deal with. 
And also what I was, go- what things were going on with me were different than my daughter. But my daughter really didn't tell me what she was going through. I didn't tell her what she I was going through. My mom didn't tell me what she was going through. So in the meantime, we're all trying to love each other and we cannot fix problems. God has to change those and remove those, but we can treat each other in love. And when we're not acting in love, that's a sign to say, yeah, maybe we're going to estrange pretty soon. (laughs) Did you ever blame yourself? Did you ever blame yourself? Oh my gosh, I'm so mad at myself. I could kick myself. I thought for sure I knew what I was doing. You know, the... um, Aristotle, he wrote uh, Oedipus Rex, and Oedipus Rex, the whole town was going to do, I don't know if you guys know the story, it's pretty gruesome, but the whole town said, Oedipus was born this baby, but he's going to grow up and do these terrible things, the whole town changed everything, but then he, he walked through that fate, and a lot of people don't realize it, but if you also look through history, when um, you know, the Latin Bible was created. A lot of the reason why people went thro- towards Christianity is because it kind of matched with the Greek philosophers and that Oedipus was like fate is fate. But then Jesus comes down in the middle and says, even if your fate is that you are going to do these things like your parents, you know what, I'm going to walk that journey with you. And so I created a marriage that I thought was very different than my mom and dad's marriage. And my grandma's marriage and the ones before that. But guess what? It ended the same. Exact same story. Broken record. How did did you get out of that hole? How did you learn? Was it the comfort in knowing that it's not your fault and God loves you anyway? How did you get out of that mindset? Because I can imagine most moms, they want to keep... I, I, I. we, I encounter it all the time. The mother that's like, oh, you'll always be my baby. You'll always be mine. And that's true. But I also need you to be an inv- individual. So how did you dig yourself out of that hole mentally? Um, was it a bag of hookah? What? what How did you do it? Well, I don't do hookah, but I, I do like a cigar now and then. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's real. That's honest. I love that. That's good. But, but what happened with me is... Um, I knew something was wrong, but I never knew what it was. And all along, and even when I was a child, I would dream about stuff. So the Holy Spirit pulled me to the side or the Father, God the Father. I think I do a lot about the Trinity. You know, if you're talking about Jesus, this is a good a good thing to think about. When you say Jesus, give honor to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit proceeds out of Jesus, proceeds out of God the Father. There is a three in one. So when I was five years old, I actually went looking for my father at the church down the street by myself. And so God sent me, set me apart. And so even though I was in the world and growing as a young girl, teenager, a young, a young, I was married at 19 out on my own with my husband who was in the Navy and all those things were going on. I was trying to fix things and make things right, but there was something wrong. And then the Holy Spirit start, started showing me, you know, this is what your husband's doing. Like when I was a child, I would see dreams of my father and my cousins and those things would end up becoming real. And then with my husband, I would dream about things and say, hey, I had this dream. You were doing this. And he'd be like, shut up. Don't say that. Mm. Well, you know, but I was so gullible. That was my husband. You would do nothing like that. Yeah, right. So um, God showed me what was happening. And I found out my husband had a secret life. Um, I didn't realize how bad it was until after I actually was divorced because many people have come forward and kind of shook off the rest of my gullibility. But other people knew what he was doing mm -hmm, all the way back in 1993. So he was, he was church guy sat with me, you know, but remember scripture says that even in the church, there's going to be Christians on the left of Jesus and on the right. You got to make sure you're on the right. And I don't mean politics. I mean, I'm with God. (laughs) But, you know, so when that all came together, I stayed with my husband two years before um, I left him um, trying to work things out. Because I do believe in marriage. I do believe in the family. I do believe in forgiveness. I agree with forgiveness. Forgiveness, I'm sorry, it comes at a cost and it's hard. But I agree with it. It does. Forgive, forgive, forgive. And uh, please forgive me. We have to go to a quick commercial break because we have to pay our bills. 
And so we don't go anywhere. This is huge. This I want to. Oh my God. I want to stay right here. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Stay with us. We'll be right, right back. I won't. Baby Gear Services DMV specializes in high quality baby gear rentals in the Maryland and DC metro area. We have a wide range of baby gear items for rent, including wooden cribs, car seats, high chairs, and more. We also offer seasonal specials and free delivery. Our prices are very versatile to cover every budget. Wooden cribs start at $17 a day, high chairs, and even car seats start at $5 a day. Check out our website www.bgsdmv.com Support for Gentleman Style Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers you precision engineering tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right. The 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off free worldwide shipping with the code GENSTYLE at manscaped.com. Back to the Gentleman Style Podcast show, and we have the amazing Jody Cunningham coming to the Gentleman Style Podcast stage, sharing her truth and her experience with mother-daughter estrangement and how she explained from generationally, this literally passed down from mother to daughter to mother and even experienced it in herself, doing all the right things, doing all the good things. If you missed that, scroll back, go back and check Miss Judy out. We are on iHeartRadio, Apple iTunes, Spotify, Ghana, Radio.com, and anywhere you get your podcast today. Uh, I have definitely experienced family estrangement, um, and, I, and I hold myself, at, and that's why I asked about, you know, how do you not blame yourself and how do you dig yourself out? I have experienced and I hold myself accountable for that because I didn't, I'm, I'm not pushing um, those connections and I feel like once I become a parent that, you know, I want, I, I, I know deep down that I want to be involved in my child. I want, that's why I do all these entrepreneurial things. So I can be at home. I want to be the stay at home dad. I want to mm-hmm. be just like, I want me and my wife to be stay at home parents. We don't have to worry. We ain't worry about money and mm-hmm. I can be there and I can be involved. But it sounds like even with that, that still doesn't help. Is there anything I can do? You know, connect with God, realize that he is ultimately in control, but you also touched on faith, right? Mm -hmm. And even though you may grow up to be a criminal, you can change today. So is there anything I can do um, to not be estranged to my children? Well, that's the situation is Adam and Eve estranged from God. Mm. That's Mm. not very fun to know. (laughs) But there are definitely things that you can do. For example, um, in my in my uh, one of my chapters, I got it from Bob and Audrey Meisner. There's actually like four ways to communicate with somebody. For example, some people really like to be safe. Some people like to be in control, not control like I'm going to control you. But like if there's a party, they know they put it together because they like to make sure that, you know, everything's going to go in a controlled way. Some people like to be liked and some people like to be right. So those are four things. And if you are living like I was living controlled and I was living right, that is not my natural self. But that was my ex-husband's self. And so I was molding to help him because he had such a big job outside of the house that within the house, he was kind of allowing this being able to stay at home and do these things with our kids. And so I thought that was a good way. However, when I get back to who I really am, I liked I like um, to be um, liked and I like to be safe. I like to be liked and I like to be safe. And I was living controlled and right so if you find out from your daughter or your son find out like what do they like do they like to feel safe if they like to feel safe you might not want to bring up really hard difficult things with them or you might say hey there's something difficult we need to talk about when you feel comfortable let's talk about it 
But for me, I'd be like, we're talking about it now. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, you can't act like Mary Poppins when you're not living your real true communication. <laughs> That's true. That's but so at true. the same same time as your kids have got to make their own way. And that is horrible. I would never have agreed to that until estrangement pointed me wow. out to like Jody. They got to make their own. They've made plans for themselves that I would never have chosen for them. But you know what? They're, it's theirs. It's their success. You know, it's their failures. It's it's all of theirs. And, you know, I want to touch on anger a little bit because one of the things I learned is God's perfect anger. He protects us. He provides. And he's our intercessory. And so when you really love your child and they do something you don't want them to do, you know, you beat the hell out of them. Be, oh, Sorry. well, maybe not that much, but yeah, maybe <laughs> you're not going to act Jesus like name. in Woo! Jesus. Name. <laughs> you know what? I really regret doing growing kids God's way. You guys might not know about it, what it was, but you did spank your children. Um, fortunately, I didn't spank it according to what that said, but there was a lot of control. But, you know, the thing is, is that when you're angry, it means that you love something. So if you can say, what is it that I protect? You're protecting something you love. And even God in his anger, the scripture says through his nostrils, he like huffed like a horse and parted the seas and he protected his people. So if your mom's blowing out her nostril holes and not acting like Mary Poppins, because you were going out there and destroying something she created for you. She's not God, but she's acting like it. <laughs> Made in his so likeness. You got to be a little bit forgiving. And I said I was sorry to my children quite a, quite a bit because, you know, kids are kids. And same with, you know, I was in trouble. You know, I discipline my kids differently. But, um, you know, what are you going to do when you got to have a difficult conversation, especially with somebody that wants to feel safe? They wouldn't want to know that they had done something that got themselves into trouble. So those are some good things to think about. Um, you do your best and you just keep walking with the Lord because he's got it. And um, I keep having these dreams about my daughter that, and I had this uh, when I was first went through estrangement, like we'd be walking, she'd open a door and go somewhere else. So as you walk with your child, they're going to open a door and go with someone else. That's kind of, they've got to have their own way. Test your own heart until I lock the door. I mean, um, so I love it. And put and put one of those things on so that your house rings to keep your kid in. A do yeah, the the ring <laughs> doorbell, the ring door lock. Yeah, you. Even, I want. Go ahead, Carmen. Oh, I'm sorry. Even with estrangement, do you believe that that one day possibly you guys can come to at least a common ground? to to come to come together with you and your children to be like hey i love you where you are mm -hmm. you guys love me where i am is there a way that we can come to a common ground to just love each other where we are and i can understand you you can understand me and we can continue going on with the family with that same respect and foundation mm -hmm. before probably no but now yes 100 percent. and it's because i know they have their own journey and I can tell you, my mother and I were estranged for seven years. And the last two years of my dad's um, life, I did have resolution with him. And I was with him when he passed away. In fact, I spoke the Isaiah scripture over him. Dad, remember, God loves you and saves you for his love for you, not in our trespasses. And so, um, but with my mom, uh, my mom and I do not have a relationship. We're, we have a relationship. We love each other. But there are things that happened in my mom's world that affected me that I, it's totally it's it's unfeasible to have those conversations with her because she's just in a different place and she's older mm -hmm. than me. And I want to respect her life and give her the good life that she can. And it doesn't matter to me what's right or wrong when it comes to what she did or she didn't do or what I did and I didn't do, because what matters is that she loves God, I love God, and I do love her. And um, the truth is the truth, whether you lie about it or you tell the truth about it. And when you're right with yourself, you're right with God, and it's easier to be right with others, even though it's difficult. It's very difficult. I, mm -hmm. I, it's very hard. Two, two experiences with me, I, um, I have a sibling that is not living so culturally, I'm from the Caribbean. I'm from the U.S. Virgin Islands. And so culturally, um, 
LGBTQ is not an acceptable mindset to have down there in that culture. And so you grow up with this huge um, wanting to censor people and wanting to like really, it's almost violent where you discover someone's gay or LGBTQI plus plus, and you like, you almost alienate them. And so I have a sibling that um, lives her life in that way. And so I, I I came home and I'm like, dad, how could you, I, I almost felt frustrated for him. I was like, how could you let this happen? What's going on? I, I, I started blaming him. And then I asked him, I said, how do you, how do you live? I feel like it's almost like a stoppage. And he's like, she's her own person. She's going to be who she's going to be. And at some point as a parent, you just pray for your kids and you just let them go. You got, you got to let them leave the nest and whatever happens, happens and you, you let it go. And then the second thing was, I just went to a comedy show, um, seeing Marlon Wayans, the celebrity comedian and actor and producer. And he discussed for two years, he's been battling a transgender child who transitioned, Mm -hmm. who did the surgery. And how difficult for two years he's been fighting that and mm-hmm. going through that, 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 the, the, the what five stages of depression and mm-hmm. going through that. And so that estrangement really happens. And I think it's more prominent than ever, especially with self expression and people wanting to be their own self. Even if I know as your parent, you're walking off a cliff. This is not mm-hmm. the best path for you. So it, it's, it's, it's huge. It's horrible. It it feels absolutely horrible, but you know, Marcus, there's a bunch of answers there. So uh, let's just think about the cliff. So I know one thing that watching my children make choices that I didn't want for them, um, whether it was you know a good expectation or even my own selfish you know pride, um, you know, it relates to how God must have felt when Adam and Eve took a bite of that of that that fruit. All they did was ate a fruit. My goodness, that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it is strange, but if you see God wasn't worried. And so as we're believers, we need to not be worried. And I would like to speak to the LBGT community because I grew up in Montana and what you're talking about, I was born in the sixties. And so that was a real deal. Um, and you're right about the violence and stuff, but at the same time, even in the church community pushing, um, you know, we're not supposed to push any way, anybody away from the cross. Everybody needs to find their way to Christ and to see him crucified, see him on the cross. You know, he was beaten beyond recognition. There is nothing he experienced that we have not experienced. And once you see him there, it's a little bit easier to share your Jesus with all people and let them make the decision. And um, we have a lot of wild things going on in our in our culture and with politics But at the end of the day, what is God going to do in each person's heart? And I can tell you in my heart, he's put joy in my heart, even when the worst things happened. You know, my my daughter, who is now, um, you know, she was born in 1996 and she was born with a tumor the size of a softball and it had cancer inside of it. And I'll tell you what, the joy of the Lord, I'm in the I'm in the. in the uh, operating room just outside of recovery and I'm crying and my body hurts so bad, like I'm being tortured, but my heart is full of joy. That's the joy of God that he gives us. So in your worry, stick to your joy. Stick to it, stick to it. In your book, you talk about the difference between expectations and expectancy in relationships. Can you Mm -hmm. touch on what are the key differences there? Mm -hmm. So expectancy is basically what the scripture says. And I'm talking the whole whole Bible. So I actually got a master's in theology. And before that, I used to cherry pick verses. Don't do that. Look at God through the whole scripture. And as in revelations, God says, there are doors that man will shut, but God will open. And there were doors that God will shut and man will not be able to open meaning humans so just expect his goodness expect that in which you cannot see but for expectations be clear when you say you're going to call your sister at five o'clock today call her at five o'clock don't call her five o'clock next week yeah carmia don't call her (laughs) i'm 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 rooting rooting for that 
that's major, right? And mm-hmm. and you're right. It's to me, I work off of, of systems and order. Mm-hmm. So you're right. I'm gonna do that today. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make time, I'm gonna put it on my calendar because that's how I live. I live off of my my phone calendar. And so you have inspired me through your love and your wisdom and your knowledge on changing and, and making it important. I think that's that's key. We're not making these things important enough. We make um, Chris Brown important. We make all these celebrities important. We make um, what's happening to this famous person over here important, but we don't make the connections in our own life important. We don't make our daughters, our sons, our mothers, our fathers important. And, and that needs to change. And so that's what I'm hearing. Am I way off here? Like, what do y'all think? No, you're on no. and get the book and read it. Absolutely. Get the book get- and read it. Because the while, while my husband was chasing the tre- the diamonds at home, the treasure was, I mean, outside of work, the treasure was at home. Our family was the treasure. Did he cheat? Did he? I feel- oh, yeah. He married my daughter. He's married now. And um, he's married to a woman that was actually supposed to be my daughter's mother-in-law. And you found out after the divorce? Oh, no, no. <laughs> wow. that, I found out two years before I found a video. Oh, and my so, um, Yeah. But that was just the, the tip of the iceberg. Oh, my gosh. You know, it's it's game over. You know what? Something like that is game over. So you can still work on yourself. But then you're like, oh, my gosh, I made these decisions. I was irritated here. I was irritated there. But it was way more than. So if I would have stopped and said, Lord, why, why am I irritated? Why am I expecting things that I shouldn't? And the Holy Spirit would have told me because he did tell me. Yeah. And then he showed me. <laughs> yeah. Is it wrong to reach out to someone you've been? I haven't talked to you in years. How long have you haven't talked to your, your daughter, your son? I've reached out a lot. So now this is up for debate. Some people are like, well, if they don't want to talk to you, don't reach out. However, I believe for myself personally, everybody's personal, that when you choose like, oh, I'm only going to choose this way because this person said so, I'm kind of stuck in what got me here. So I actually pray about what I send my children. At first, I just sent them a bunch of stuff because I was frantic. But now I kind of pr- I pray about what I send. And I'm pretty careful with how I send and what I send. Because what if I die tomorrow? At least my children know I sent them, sent them emails. I still love them. And no matter if they never show up in my lifetime, I want my daughter and my son to know that as the sun is setting, that is where I am with Jesus looking out for tomorrow for them to make it. Can you share can you share an example or something that you send um, to not be intrusive? Like what's an example of not being intrusive, but still showing love? Like send you a book of like a book that I'm reading or a book that I think would add value to their life. Like what is an example right. of something? Well, well, so that's in a, in a if you think about it, you want to be careful not to tell them what to do. But <laughs> send, them, send them a book on estrange, estrangement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, well, maybe intent. <laughs> intent. right. So, you know what I do, like the last uh, message I sent, I have this beautiful picture of my daughter playing, you know, on at the park. And it's just such a nice picture of her. And um, I sent it to her and I just said, these, this is the you that I love so much. I hope your life is going well. Mine is going, going, going well. I miss you. And that's it. But that still makes her mad. So, you know, you, I don't know if it makes her mad, but I think it does. Anyway, so you don't really know what you're doing, but you can send stuff or you can write letters and write journals so that they have it if anything happens. But you can pray that God will make a divine um, entrance of them into your life and be ready. So that's the thing is being ready, because if you're not secure, they can't want to they don't want to stay. Yeah, I feel like I feel like if I feel like the perpetrator the reason I think why I feel guilty is because people reach out to me and over time they just they get used to me not responding. So they stop responding. So I feel guilty. Mm-hmm. And so who, who should who should break that cycle first? Is it always the parent or should I just sit back and wait for the child to reach out to me? Well, I think that's the Holy Spirit knocking on your on your heart. And so what you could do is say, hey, I had that you could, if you want, you can say, hey, I had this lady on the podcast and she really kind of stuck it to me. I didn't mean to, Marcus. She beat me up. 
I, I've up. been I've been beaten up too. So and just say I know that I didn't ever respond. You know, how about this? Would you be okay with a phone call once a month? Lay out the expectation. You might not be able to like I want to talk to my daughter every hour on the hour, and she better call me. That's how bad I was. Are you that's kidding rude. me? Yeah, that's you rude. know that's my baby girl. Oh my gosh, she came from yeah. my body. I love that child. Same with my son. But yeah, if you can say, hey, I know we haven't spoken. I want to make time for you. Uh, would you know a text or email? What do you want? Set it up. Hmm. Set it up. But I got to tell you that when it comes to some of these, so my book has got. Like it's got two sides, a mother and daughter. One side is each brick is the same. Each side of the bridge. They're so close and so far away. But if you use this, these bricks to throw at your, your other sibling or your daughter or your, you know, your mom, you're not going to have a bridge of solid, of, of celerity. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to be solid. So even if the problems are not resolved. So that's a big problem, you know, for my daughter, like, but her, her issues with my, her husband, her, my, my ex-husband, her dad, that's hers. Those are not mine now. I'm totally out of it. And so if I do talk to her, I, that's none of my business to talk about her and her dad now. Just that's ask. real. That's real. You don't bring it up. You don't back talk and you let her discover on her own. Carmia, what is some ways that you would like to be reached out? Like you said, you mentioned your parent like your living parent currently, what is, what is some acceptable ways that you would like them to approach you if at all? Any, any suggestions there or tips for the audience? I am a big person of the phone works two ways. Mm. I shouldn't be the only one reaching out. My you phone do. is open. You could send a text. You could send a funny meme. You could, you could, you know, send a voice with all the stuff our iPhones and Androids can do, you can send a voice message. Hey, just reaching out. Thought about you today. Like, okay, Th that parent's trying. Yeah. Like, just the effort. It's all about the effort, and you just never know. That's what it took on 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 my end. The effort of the parent. Like, oh, okay, he's trying. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna follow it up. Love so it. this 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 is really hard hard is that sometimes your parent has so much pain. Think of them as a dog that got hit by a car in the street and you go to pick up that dog and take them to the vet, but they bite you. So you don't know what pain they're having. And so sometimes you have to let go of the pain they're causing you by not reaching out and say, hey, I would like you in my life. Would want, you know, one, one call a month, one email a month, what would be good for you? Because you're laying your cross down. You're giving yourself a chance. Remember, Jesus was crucified for us. And I'm not saying you put yourself in danger. Do not do that. You know, but at the same time, it might just be they're so embarrassed and shamed. They have one life to live. I mean, I have one life to live. I had one marriage to get it right, really, 33 years. And had no idea that it was very wrong in a lot of ways. It was very, very right. But it was also some stuff were wrong, was wrong. Are you, would you get married again? Um, well, it's not in my financial best interest. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's honest. That's real. That's real talk. So real I am talk. retired. My ex-husband was retired military. And so I was a naval wife for 21 years with him. And so I would lose all my medical, but I would do like a vow um, with somebody. But I've noticed that a lot of men my age that I meet, they've got a lot of stuff going on and I've grown so much that I'm a little bit hard fit. Um, so, and I also just, you know, I love, I have to find somebody that really loves Jesus. Like I want somebody that loves Jesus more than me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And loves and loves that you have medical already and not, and not want you to lose that benefit. That's real. That's right. Mm -hmm. You have a community, estrangement mm -hmm. community. Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk about what you guys do in your community and what do you guys talk about and, and discuss mm -hmm. in your estrangement mothers and daughters community great so it's on school s-k-o-o-l and it's moms and daughters now it just opened because i just started uh released our book like two weeks ago there's only a few people on there it is free there are only a couple videos that you can pay for it's like super cheap it's like three dollars but on there the people that are in the book that have the doctorates they're actually in the video and um, we do conversations like, for example, um, we talk about the um, ACE trauma 
test. So that test you can take online it is actually 10 questions. And if you've had at least one of those that you can say yes to, the probability of you being addicted to some type of substance is 130% if you don't deal with that childhood trauma. If you have three or more, the probability of you passing away before you're 60 years old is 1,300%. It's a big deal because our body, <laughs> Marcus is like, what's going on? So wow. and I have seven of those. I have seven of those ACE tests. So the reason why I'm standing here is the glory of Jesus Christ, the glory of the Lord, because I do, and I spend time healing emotions that I had that happened in my family of origin. But I also know they happened because my own family was dealing with stuff out of their control. That's true. Where can we get a copy of the book? Where can our audience get a copy of the book today? Go to Amazon.com and you will find Estrangement Healing for Mothers and Daughters on there. Get it. Get the book. This is huge. Ooh. Huge. Get a book on Amazon available today. Is it is it hard copy or is it just the Kindle or what? It's Kindle and paperback. It is both. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for those of you who like the paperback, you also have that. I thought it was Kindle only, but thank God. Now I can get the hard copy book. This is huge. Yeah. Yeah. You have shared so many nuggets this episode. And I, I, I just wanted to ask you've given so many dimes, so many nuggets. If you had one final nugget in the hat, in the book, and you're and a young girl who's watching this and her back's against the wall, she doesn't know where, where to go, who to reach out to, where to connect. Should she reach out first or should she wait till the parent reaches out? What would you say to that young girl in the audience right now? Mm hmm. Well, it depends on the situation because there's things that your parents are doing that is out of your control. But your fa Heavenly Father loves you more than anything. And like the swan puts its wings over the babies in the storm, Jesus spread his wings for you on the cross for you. He is your Father. And the Holy Spirit is going to be with you and give you those answers. <laughs> Money guy, what is that money guy? <laughs> That's the gentleman style podcast. He is rooting for you, and he comes out whenever you say love anything that's just like bomb dropping, right? Mic drop. We don't you want know, you Marcus, to drop the mic. So, yeah, Marcus, I would like to say something to the men if you don't mind. Please. Uh oh. Please. So, okay, men, if you uh -huh. are listening, I Please now have been single for three years. I am a very good golfer, and I golf with men. And they tell me things that you say to them that cheer them on to do, be less than a great man of God and less than a family family man. Keep being a family man. Keep chasing God. All the other things, it's fleeting. It's not worth it. And someday you might get beat on the golf course if someone believes the truth. <laughs> what, what's your favorite cigar? I like a, a 1926 uh, uh, Patron. At the oh. Monte Cristo, at the Monte Cristo in, in Las Vegas. Super flavorful. Super flavorful. <laughs> so fellas, don't she's a shark. Don't <laughs> challenge her to a game of, of golf. But check her out. This is dope. Super, super powerful. This has been an incredible show. Incredible, incredible. Carmia, what what would you have to say to our audience and love and support? What would you say to them right now? Well, I just believe, like I stated, it's all about effort. It's a way to come. It's, I believe there's always a chance to come back from being estranged from your, your parent, your sibling, that family member, even if it comes to that friend. If it's healthy, if it's healthy, <laughs> it's, it's very possible. But, you know, the effort has to be made. Somebody has to make the effort so, you know, someone can follow. Mm-hmm. I got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> I can't come behind these two powerhouse ladies. This has been a fantastic show. We have to let this incredible woman uh, <laughs> promote her book. I'm sorry. I'm distracted by <laughs> our mascot. <laughs> um, we have to let this incredible woman, Miss Cunningham, go. Thank you for making time for us. And I want to say this to you publicly. Don't ever quit. Don't ever Thank give you. up. We Thank need you. you. You're mm -hmm. changing the world. Mm -hmm. One household. That's right one family at a time. 
And thank you all for tuning in to the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I hope this helps. I hope this message has served you and encouraged you to never give up, right? Mm -hmm. The world is changing, but you can change today. You're not stuck. You're not in a rut. And get a copy of Estrangement. You can change today. So like we always end every show, take care of your friends, take care of your family, and always, always take care of business. This is Marcus, your favorite gentleman, and... Carmia Wells, an unorthodox Southern Bale. And the incredible, super fragilistic, espialidocious Jody Cunningham signing off. We love you guys. Bye. Thank you.